Hi everyone, my name is Yuxin Ko, and I'm a program manager in the Microsoft Identity and Network Access organization. In my role, I focus on a feature that helps developers make secure applications by limiting the permissions their application request and are granted. In this video, I will explain why applications should not request more permissions than they need. I will introduce the term overpublish, explain what it means, and provide tips for limiting privilege when it comes to your applications. The first topic uh, we're going to cover is overpublish. Overpublish occurs when an application requests or is granted more permissions than it needs for function. I will explain what it means with a couple examples. Imagine that there are three locked doors. Behind the doors are your assets. Then you have three pair of keys that allow you to open the corresponding door. For example, the blue key can open the blue door. If you only need access to the second door, then you should only carry the yellow key with you. To better protect your assets, you should only have the key you need and keep the other keys somewhere safer. The second scenario I want to introduce is reducible keys. This one is more complicated than the first one. For our context, we will add two special keys in the scenario. The first black key is a master key that can open all the doors. And the second black key is able to open the yellow and the green door. If you only need access to the second and the last door, what keys should you have? The answer is simple, the second black key. Since you only need access to the yellow and the green door, you should keep your master key safe and take off the green key that is redundant. In the Microsoft identity world, the keys can be represented as permissions, access as your resources, and yourself, the key holder, as an application. If you understand the risk of carrying unnecessary keys, you will be aware of the risk of your applications having unnecessary permission. You must be wondering how doors and keys can help us understand how overprivilege happens, right? You might also ask why your application has the right permissions to perform the task, but it's still overpublished in the end. Here we are going to discuss what the permission gap is might cause the discrepancy. Let's use a diagram to help you learn this concept. We have the x access time and y access permissions. In the beginning, you request and are granted permission for your application. As the business grows and changes, you might add new permissions to support your needs and the slope might increase. However, it's easy to lose track of the granted permission. Also, it's common that you forgot to remove unnecessary permissions if the application doesn't break. And this is how the gap is created. Moreover, here are some interesting findings of Microsoft Identity Platform. We have more than 4,000 APIs in Microsoft Graph. More than 200 Microsoft Graph permissions are available on Microsoft Identity Platform. This gives developers to, uh, access to a wide range of data and the ability to apply granularity to the permissions requested by their apps. But it means that developers need to think carefully about what is actually required for their app. In our own investigations, we found out only 10% of the permissions in an app are fully utilized for their scenario. Be aware of the permission gap and regularly check your application. Next, we are diving deeper into what risk will be created if your application has a permission gap. The developer is not the only persona that is involved in overpublished scenarios. Before we discuss uh, the compromising scenario, let's define two roles, IT admin and developer. Jeff is a tenant admin who ensures all the applications in Azure AD are trustworthy and secure. Part of his job is to grant the consent of the permissions that are required by app developers. Kelly is an app developer who uses Microsoft Identity Platform and owns few apps. Her job is to ensure that all her applications have the right permissions to perform their required tasks. A common security compromise scenario for overpublish we observe from the industry usually involves four stages. First, the developer starts configuring the application and adding permission it needs. Second, the IT admin grants consents for required permissions after reviewing the permissions. Third, the back actor starts cracking user credential 
and successfully hack the user identity. If the user happens to own few applications that are also identifying as overprivileged, then the bad actor could use the token of the granted permission to retrieve sensitive data in a hobby. In the previous part, we talked about the definition of overprivileged and the consequence of being overprivileged. Next, we will learn more about overprivileged application in Microsoft Identity Platform. When an entity asks for, or in some cases is granted, more permissions than it needs, we call it overprivileged. The definition of overprivileged applications in Microsoft Identity Platform is any application that's been granted an unused or reducible permission. We will use Microsoft Graph as part of the Microsoft Identity Platform as a real world example to help you better understand this concept. What's unused permission and reducible permission? Let's discuss the first scenario, unused permission. The definition is when your application has been granted some permissions that are not necessary at all for the desired tasks. As an example, if you are building a calendar app that has requested and be granted permission files.readwrite.all, but doesn't integrate with any files APIs, then your application has an unused permission files.rewrite.all. The second scenario is the reducible permission. This one, like the keys example, is tri trickier, harder to discover. The definition is when your application has been granted few permissions, but it has a lower privilege alternative that would still provide the access for required tasks. Let's take the calendar app as example again. Your calendar app has request and been granted files.rewrite.all but it only needs to read files from the signing user's OneDrive and never needs to create new files or modify existing ones. In this case, your application only partially utilizes files.read.all, so you need to downgrade to files.read.all. Security is a journey, not a destination. There are three distinct phases, prevention, auditing, and remediation in security lifecycle. You must be wondering how I could stay away from being overprivileged. Here's our suggestion. When building an application, developer needs to fully understand the permission required for the API calls that your application needs to make, and only request what is necessary to enable your scenario. IT admin and developers should review the privilege that have been previously granted or to existing applications or a regular basis. If the IT admin or developer notice there's an overprivileged application in the ecosystem, the developer should stop requesting tokens of the overprivileged permission and the IT admin should revoke the granted, uh, granted consents. This step usually requires a code change. The last topic we want to cover is the benefit of maintaining this privilege permission with your applications. There are two major incentives for doing this, driving the application adoption and stopping the, the spread. By limiting what your application has permission to only what it needs to complete its task, you reduce the potential blast radius of the attacks and increase adoption of your apps by customers. In our experience, we are applying more scrutiny when reviewing permission being requested by application and deciding whether to grant a given app permissions. When you create an app that asks for a lot of unnecessary permission, it will be least likely to be approved or could be denied altogether. Preventing attackers uh, from gaining elevated privilege that increase the scope of the compromise is the best way to control damage. For example, if your application only has user.readbasic.all to read user basic information, your OneDrive, Outlook, Teams, and any confidential data are safe in the event your app has been compromised. Finally, we have four major useful resources that could help you adopt this privilege principle. First, the identity blog has more detailed content on what we covered today. Second, we have posted uh, best practice guidance on configuring your permission within Microsoft Identity Platform documentation. Last, 
using our Grab Explorer and Microsoft Grab documentation. You can determine the Microsoft Grab API calls you need to make in order to enable your app scenario. Then find the corresponding permissions from least to most privilege. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you next time.